Welcome to Share Bright Light. I'm Derek. Today we're gonna to be talking about the seventh yellow light. We're gonna be going to Walmart, we're gonna be meeting some friends, so why don't you just come along with us? So I'm up here at Walgreens. My doctor told me to come pick up some fish oil for cholesterol. Happy to announce I'm on no prescription medications whatsoever. Today's yellow light is unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is refusing to pardon or forgive a past offense. Three things I want you to remember about forgiveness. Number one, forgiveness is not condoning an offense. We're not saying it was okay what was done or was not done. Number two, there may be consequences for the offense. If I hit your car because I'm speeding, I may have to pay for the damage. Number three, forgiveness is not allowing others to take advantage of you. Just a quick example about unforgiveness. A couple of years ago, I got mad at one of my friends for something, had nothing to do with Facebook. And I blocked her on Facebook, right? And I was showing her. Now, it would have been different if she'd been going to my Facebook, posting bad stuff or anything like that, but she wasn't. And the Lord, the Lord allowed me to see that that was unforgiveness. And she showed up at the house and she thought I was gonna be mad. And I said, come on in here. The Lord told me I had unforgiveness in my heart. And that, that's an example. And that's kind of a way people unforgive people nowadays. All right, we're gonna go some more places. So be sure to go with us. the Bible in the love chapter, that famous 1 Corinthians chapter 13, says that love keeps no record of wrongs. We don't have a list of, well, Bob did this, and Susie did this, and Joanne did this. That's not what love does. It's as if it's an empty slate. Nothing's been done against us whatsoever. Isn't that delivery of that thing really cool? So, story on this, my dad wants to play a video game together. I've gotta to get this joystick. It's a game called Mech Warrior 4. It's gonna be pretty cool. In Matthew 18, verses 21 and 22, it says, Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often my brother sinned against me and I forgive him. Up to seven times, Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. And so what we see here is the Lord Jesus saying, it's not just three strikes and you're out. It's a continual life of forgiveness and grace where we are to be imitators of God, forgiving people, where we are not to allow a root of bitterness to get into our heart. We are to forgive people. We are to lay down our self, self-righteousness, all the reasons why we should be forgiven all the reasons why they owe me love, they owe me respect, they, they shouldn't have been abandoned me. And we let go of our right because if we are believers in Jesus Christ, we have died to our old self and we are now living through Jesus. Jesus lives in us and through us. So remember, this is the yellow light of unforgiveness. When you see a person that's constantly talking about somebody else's failures and inadequacies, like, oh, my ex-wife is crazy. You hear that one a lot. Oh, my mom and dad, they didn't do this. Oh, my cousin did this. When it's just a constant talking about other people's inadequacies and failures and never taking responsibility for their part in anything, that person may be bearing unforgiveness. Slow down and use extra caution. Slow down and use extra caution.
boy, that food was really good. But I want to tell you what Jesus began to teach on forgiveness and unforgiveness in Matthew 18. Jesus begins to teach about what the kingdom of heaven is like. What is, what is, how, how does the government of God, how does the mechanics, how does it work? And he begins to tell about a king who wanted to begin settling accounts. And he came across a servant who owed a very large amount. And so in order to settle the debt, the, the man was going to have to sell his wife and children. And the, the, the servant, of course, was very afraid. And he cried out to the king to please have mercy upon him and forgive his debt. Now this king was moved with compassion and forgave the, the, the servant's debt. So after this, that servant goes and finds another servant that owes him just a little bit of money, not even compared to what, the, what he owed the king. And so he demands that this person be put in jail. And whenever the, the other king's servants heard of this, they t went and told the king. The, very, the king was very upset that this man would go and put other people in jail and not forgive their debt when the king forgave this person so great of debt. And so the king takes this this original person who had forgiven their debt and he goes and puts them with the jailers and the tormentors until their debt is paid. And so at the end of this, and Jesus says, and this is how my father in heaven will treat each of you if you don't forgive your brother from your heart. I was pondering this recently and it occurred to me that the king revoked the original forgiveness that he had given this servant. And so what Jesus is saying here is, you know, I used to think, you know, if, if I forgive, you know, God will forgive me for everything I've done in the past. I never have to worry about that again. But, but what Jesus is saying in this parable is that our, if we hold unforgiveness against others, God revokes the forgiveness that he had given us on those past sins. And we now owe what we had been forgiven previously. And it says that Jesus said, this is how the, my father will treat each of those who don't forgive. And we see in other places in the, in the Bible that uh, God won't forgive us unless we forgive others. So it's so critical that we forgive, that we do not hold a grudge, a bitterness against any person, no matter what. You know, I'll link below a story of a lady who had a vision where Jesus had taken her to hell because of unforgiveness. And so I would just urge you, if there is someone that you have not forgiven, and there is not evidence that you have not forgiven them with your heart, or you have not given them a clean slate, then I would beg you to do that. I beg you to forgive them, please. It is not worth it. If God is willing to forgive you for every sin, everything that you have done, which is of great price. The, the Bible says that the wages of sin is death and the gift of God is eternal life. If God is willing to forgive your debt, then you should be willing to forgive some trespass against you or someone did you wrong. It's just not worth it, my friend. And God doesn't want us to have that unforgiveness in us. You know, unforgiveness is a, a blocker to healing, blocker for deliverance. It blocks so many things. In addition to, it puts us in a place where God is not forgiving. He revokes forgiveness for our sins. And so my friend, I just want to end this with Jesus. He doesn't want anybody to be in a place of unforgiveness. To forgive and to forget and to give someone when you look at someone a clean slate as if they have never done you wrong and to, to treat them that there will be evidence that you have forgiven them by the way that you are treating them by the tone of your voice when you call them and by what you type when you message them so i encourage you if you have unforgiveness then go make it right and share your bright light until next time